here, right here. Right here. Testing, one, two. Testing. I don't know. I, I know it's expensive. Okay. Ma'am. Mm -hmm. I work with a TV station back in Tyler. Uh, can I leave a microphone up here? Sure. We're trying to live stream. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Which station? KTK. Okay. Yes, ma'am. But you're not Frank. Frank is Over off there. back that way. Well, I'm, I'm Joanne, and I'm uh, the one that gave you all the information. Oh, okay. Thank you for coming. Oh, no problem. Patrick. Patrick, okay. Oh, thank you. I'll ask you for a race. <laughs> oh, that too. <laughs> special guests and sponsors. Republican State Representative of District 6, Matt Schaefer, and Chief of Staff, Sarah Hartsfield. Special thanks to the East Texas Veterans Community Council, the American Freedom Museum, Camp V Community Assisting Military Personnel and Veterans, the Marine Corps Tyler Recruiting Station, HAM Historic Aviation Memorial Museum, Tyler High School JROTC, Donut Julian Castle, author, speaker, retired teacher. Prestige Estates, assisted living and memory care. The reigning Miss Texas senior classic queen, Regina Money. The Flower Box. Blue Bonnet Point Wellness. 
The City of Bullard, Jim Little, Taps Bugler, East Texas Men in Harmony, The Brook Hill School, Tyler Army Recruiting Company, Cheryl Sartain Realtor, Carter Blood Care, Ryan Two Marketing LLC, and all of you amazing volunteers. This event wouldn't have been possible without you. I would like to take a moment to thank Jan Hummel and Robin Byerlin of the American Freedom Museum for allowing us to host our celebration at this incredible museum. Robin, would you please come up here to the podium? Miss Regina Money, the reigning Miss Texas Senior Classic Queen and owner of the Flower Box, is presenting Robin with a bouquet of red roses and a coin from Canby. A military veteran is someone who at one point in their life wrote a blank check made payable to the United States of America for any amount up to including their life. Some people live an entire lifetime and wonder if they ever made a difference. A military veteran knows that they didn't. We're here to honor our veterans who have sacrificed so much for the simple love of America and the freedoms that we all cherish we must always recognize veterans for their unwavering service to our country. Only someone who has raised their right hand and taken an oath of allegiance to our country to defend, to support, and represent its standards and creeds really knows what it is to be called a veteran. Their willingness to serve gives us the freedom to learn, to protest and improve, stand strong today because these men and women thought it right considered it worth fighting for, and made it a reality for the freedoms to continue. George Washington, our first president, said, the willingness with which our young people are likely to serve in any war, no matter how justified, shall be directly proportional as to how they perceive the veterans of the earlier wars were treated and appreciated by their nation. This is so true today as it was in the beginning. So to all of our military veterans, we say thank you. For those that can, please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the presentation of colors, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the National Anthem. The invocation will be led by Dr. Doug Hanning. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you for loving us the way you do. Lord, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. We thank you for this great land that we live in, Lord, and the freedoms that we have to come together and to honor those who have served our country. Lord, we thank you for them. Lord, we thank you for our veterans. We thank you for our veterans' families who support them while they were away for deployments, through sickness and in health. Lord, we thank you for them. Lord, we ask you special blessing today on today's service for all those veterans and families that are represented here today. Lord, we ask for your blessing upon all our men and women that are serving our country and the armed forces around the world. That you bless them, Lord. And Lord, that you bless this great republic. And we ask all these favors in Christ Jesus' holy name. Amen. The presentations of colors by the Tyler J. ROTC, led by Sergeant Major Retired Mark Whitford. Color guard, forward, march, left, 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 right, 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 left, 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 right, 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 left, 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 right, right,
national anthem. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. The fallen soldier table is on display inside the museum as you enter. Those who have served and those currently serving in the uniformed services of the United States are ever mindful that the sweetness of enduring peace has always been tainted by the bitterness of personal sacrifice. They are compelled to never forget that while we enjoy our daily pleasures, others have endured or may be still enduring the agonies of pain and internment. We call attention to this small table which occupies a place of dignity and honor. The tablecloth is white. The purity of their intentions in response to their country's call to arms. The single rose in a vase signifies the blood they may have shed for our freedom. The slice of lemon signifies their bitter fate. The salt reminds us of the many countless tears of families as they wait. The glass inverted, they can't drink with us tonight. The chair is empty, they are not here. Let us not forget the sacrifices of those and their families. Please welcome author, speaker, retired teacher, Donald Castle reading her poem, Lest We Forget. And she will also be reading the poem of the winner of the school art competition, Ariana Payton, daughter of Tyson and Brittany Payton. Ariana is a student of Bullard Kindergarten, and her poem is called My Veterans Day Poem. So Donna will be reading that as well. Thank you. Well, good morning. I've been waiting for you for weeks and weeks, and here you are. We have planned and planned and planned, haven't we, Candy? And I think that uh, you would appreciate all the volunteers and we did everything we could except control the weather. We even discussed a tent and look what we have. Such a beautiful day just to honor you. I want you to know that I have become the writer uh, in my life, and I write on different topics, sometimes for God and church and other things, but my favorite evolving topic is the veterans. It started with warriors, and it has compiled 
through the last few years with me knowing Colonel Jim Snow and my involvement with Camp V and my love for veterans and your bonding and all the things that you do. I'm learning what you do. And I'm going to promise you from now on, once we get this military uh, collection coin uh, published in a book, from then on, the, the more I write for you, the more I'm going to honor you and lift you up. Now, I would like to share my point by letting you help me uh, share the spotlight. You have a wonderful copy that the committee provided for you in your program. When you get to verse 2, wait for verse 2, I'm a school teacher, verse 2, <laughs> I'm sharing the spotlight. That's not easy for teachers. <laughs> when you hear me say words to your song, I'm going to ask the veterans that are part of that song to stand up. And then for just a few seconds, and then please sit down because we have some others coming. And then I decided while they're standing, it's okay for all of you, the family and the friends and the rest of the audience, to go ahead and clap for them. Why not? If you will look at your program and open your heart to lest we forget. Dear veterans, you are honored on this special day. America's town squares will gather at each memorial wall. Tears of joy, tears of sorrow, and remembering each loved one who answered the call. During the parade, sing when the band plays your sacred song. Lyrics of loyalty, loud, strong and the army goes marching along where are you thank you, thank you. from the halls of montezuma to the shores of tripoli stand up thank you anchors away my boys anchors away we go into the wild blue yonder. There you are. So here's the Coast Guard marching song. Excellent. Thank you for your service. You remember battleground hell. You remember the exploding bombshell, and you remember when your buddies fell. Whenever the time comes, you'll pass the torch to our nation's youth, each a potential cadet. But until then, please tell us your stories, old beloved vets, lest we forget. I'm going to try to read it without crying. Come help me, Brianna. Let's clap for Brianna. Ariana. Ariana. And Brittany, I'm sorry. It was a surprise today. I'm a, I'm a former teacher, professor, and I recognize talent. We have talent right here, five years old. My Veterans Day poem. Roses are red, violets are blue. Veterans Day is special for me and for you. My daddy served our country and he did it proud. He never asked for anything. He never shared it loud. He was prideful because he did it and he knew he'd be great. 
When I was born, my mommy told me a little story about my daddy being late. He was late because the Marines told my daddy he had to wait. He never saw my pictures in my mommy's tummy. He was always had to wait. I am five years old now, and I kind of understand what my daddy did to become such a great man. I have a brother, and we both loved him too. I hope you get to celebrate my daddy and what my daddy gave up for me to do for you. Although I am not mad, I don't ever want to cry. My daddy would go tomorrow if the Marines told him why. He wanted to be the best daddy that he could be. And he also wanted to serve his country for you and for me. Thank you to all my mommies and daddies for going and doing your part. I have my daddy now. Some only have them in their heart. For all the kids without their parents by their side, just know I'm with you every day and every night. I love you, Ariana Paxson. I would like to introduce Brian Willis, Mayor Pro Tem of Bullard, Texas. Brian Willis is serving in his second year as Mayor Pro Tem, having been on the Bullard City Council since 2017. Brian owns a law firm in Tyler, Texas, practicing in the areas of family and probate law. Brian and his wife, Courtney, have been married for 14 years, and they have two children. Brian and his wife are active in numerous community activities, including Rotary and Cub Scouts. In his spare time, Brian enjoys running with their bloodhound rescue dog, Jake. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brian Willis. Good morning. Our mayor, Pam Frederick, was originally scheduled to be here to speak to you today, but unfortunately she can't be here. I know Mayor Frederick loves our veterans, and I can assure you if she could be here to thank you in person, she would be here. So allow me to thank each and every veteran for your service to our country and the sacrifices that you have all made. I'd like to take a minute today to talk about courage, your courage, but not the kind of courage we traditionally recognize today. Of course, I thank you for the courage that you you put putting your life and your, your family aside, your willingness to risk your life for our country, in many cases risking your life to protect our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The courage I want to talk about is the courage you showed early on in your service. The courage you showed shortly after you enlisted or were drafted into the U.S. military. You see, you showed up to basic training as a unique individual. You had your own views of the world. You had your own opinions, your own political beliefs. You came from Texas, or Florida, or New York, or California, or some farm in one of the flyover states in between. You were black, you were white, you were Hispanic, you were Asian, you were Catholic, Jewish, Methodist, or perhaps even an atheist. And then you learned, learned to put your personal beliefs aside. You learned that whatever your personal beliefs told you about that soldier, airman, sailor, or marine next to you didn't matter. You had to learn how to accept your differences and work together as one. If you didn't like what someone said, too bad. You couldn't walk away. You learned that you had a right to an opinion, but once a decision was made, you had to accept it. You had to work together as a team despite your differences. Because if you didn't, the consequences were deadly. You put your personal beliefs aside and trusted the training, experience, and discipline that the military as an institution provided to overcome all of your individual differences. Trusting someone you disagree with on a deep, personal level, that takes courage. Unfortunately, we don't see a whole lot of that type of courage these days. It's too easy to disparage and dismiss someone we disagree with. It's too easy to retreat to the comfort of those who share our beliefs. It's too easy to lose trust in the institutions that form the foundation of our country, those institutions that you serve to defend. It's too easy to forget that we're one team in one country under God. For the sake of this country, I hope we all learn to have a little more of the courage that you all have. 
I hope you will go forth and continue your service to our country by sharing some of that courage with our world today. So I thank you again for your courage. Thank you to every soldier, airman, sailor, marine, coasty, spaceman. Let's not forget the new guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your service. And God bless you all. I would like to introduce Major Beverly Russell with the U.S. Air Force Reserve. Beverly Russell is an attorney admitted to practice law in New York State. Before attending law school, Ms. Russell served as an officer in the United States Air Force. Achieving the rank of major and transition from active duty to reserve status in 1992. While on active duty, Ms. Russell served the nation at different duty stations with varied responsibilities. Notably, she was a unit commander, taught and served as an administrator in the Air Force ROTC program at Howard University and was a staff officer at the Pentagon. Currently, as a member of the East Texas Veterans Community Council, ETBCC, Board of Directors, and Co-Chair of the Women's Committee, Ms. Russell is planning programs and services for women military members, veterans, and caregivers at Camp V, community assisting military personnel and veterans, a one-stop resource center in Tyler, Texas, Smith County. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Major Beverly Russell. Good morning. Veterans are mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, husbands and wives, children and grandchildren. Veterans are people like me, like you, regular Americans who decided at some point to serve our country in uniform. Whether packing up families or, as I did, as a young person out of college, loading up my car with my father in tow and heading to officer training school, we all redirected our lives towards the singular purpose of defending the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. What prompts a person to serve? Well, we join the services for different reasons. To sail the seas and waterways, to fly the skies, to charge the hill, or to have a role supporting the valiant missions of each of the branches of service. Some join because of a family tradition men and women who serve because of a treasured family member who took a similar path. Some join for economic reasons. Maybe the uniformed services afford a great way to provide for your family. Still others join to get educational benefits. And after getting that degree, they stay and experience successful careers. And then there are those who are just motivated by duty, honor, country. We have all had our reasons to serve. After officer training school, I grew up in the Air Force having more responsibility than I could have ever imagined as a 23-year-old. As a leader of men and women, my character had to be what greeted people first. Could the troops entrusted to me trust me to lead them? I went on active duty with a creed from officer training school ringing in my ears. I will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. I became a better citizen for my service and learned how to put others first. My father, who encouraged me to join the military because he knew me better than I knew myself, got it right. And I would do it again. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. I joined the community of veterans that as of July 2020, had a membership of 19,209,704 veterans. Of that number, I am included in the 10% that represents women veterans. So people separate from the service for a number of different reasons as well. I left during a time of downsizing with the separation package that allowed me to go to law school and begin a new career. Some, as I indicated earlier, take advantage of the educational benefits 
but leave after a short stint of service to become productive citizens, contributing in other ways. For others, the assignments become too much when children have to change schools and find new friends. Families get an assignment somewhere that they like and decide to stabilize, separating and settling into that community or returning to their hometown. The reasons vary, but one thing is for sure, we are proud of our service and grateful for the doors honorable service opens for us when we return to civilian life. But the picture is not always rosy for veterans, and I feel I need to, sh to share that side as well. We support all veterans, and we leave no man behind. According to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, of the adult homeless population, veterans represent 11%. The majority are predominantly male, with about 9% being female. According to the National Coalition for Homeless Veterans, nearly half of the homeless veterans served during the Vietnam War, two-thirds served our country for at least three years, and one-third were stationed in a war zone. About 1.4 million other veterans are at risk of becoming homeless due to poverty, lack of support networks, and dismal living conditions. In addition to the complex set of factors influencing all homelessness, the veteran community also has factors of the lingering effects of post-traumatic stress disorder and substance abuse. Because not all military careers usually convert to skills transferable to a civilian job, many veterans have difficulty finding employment, which can result in homelessness. As many in this audience know and represent, Military members leave the service with, or later develop, a service-connected disability. As of August 2019, that number was 4.7 million veterans with illnesses and injuries ranging from mental illness to the loss of limbs from serving in combat. Freedom comes with a price, and many have sacrificed their lives and limbs to keep us free. Those who wear the uniforms of the military branches serve to protect every American. So, support veterans by volunteering at or donating to veterans organizations. In addition to limited government resources, community resources supporting veterans can be more personalized and directed toward local veterans' needs. For those who don't know, and it has been mentioned, Camp V, an organizer and supporter of today's program, located in Tyler, is a one-of-a-kind community resource conceived and organized to serve veterans, active duty members, their families and caregivers, in partnership with other community resources, provide a range of services to reduce homelessness, provide mental health services, focus on the unique needs of women veterans, and promote other support systems being developed and implemented to assist with the transition of military members to all aspects of veteran life. The origin of the veterans model is words from Abraham Lincoln's second inaugural address in 1865, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan. As I come to a close, I have to mention the military families that in their own way serve with their family members. Husbands and wives with children follow spouses who can be deployed anywhere in the world. They too deserve our gratitude and care. As of 2019, 453,000 survivors of veterans who died from service-related conditions received compensation. 4,100 veteran survivors received a home loan guarantee. 4,100 veteran survivors, I'm sorry, 101,000 survivors and dependents are educational assistance recipients. And 4,200 scholarships have gone to survivors of veterans who died in service after 9-11. I found a quote from Congressman Dan Lipinski of Illinois that I think is relevant today. On this Veterans Day, let us remember the service of our veterans and let us renew our national promise to fulfill our sacred obligations to our veterans and their families who have sacrificed so much so we can live free. 
thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. introduce the East Texas Men in Harmony singing patriotic songs and salute to the armed forces. the East Texas Men in Harmony. We would like to thank all the veterans for your service. Uh, we're glad to be singing for you. Uh, we are, oh, okay, sorry about that. That's okay. Didn't realize it got turned off. There you go. Um, we are the East Texas Men in Harmony. We're glad to be here. Uh, thank you for your service if you are a veteran. Thank you for your family member's service if you are a family member. Um, we are, uh, we were asked to sing some patriotic songs, and since we're from Texas, this is our own personal Texas patriotic song. <laughs>
Thank you again. Um, I, like I mentioned, we are the East Texas Men in Harmony, and we uh, we meet every Monday night at a little place down the road in Tyler called the uh, Green Acres Baptist Church at 7 p.m. on Monday evenings. And uh, we know that a lot of this crowd would uh, would probably fit right in with us, and we'd like to see you on some Monday evening if you are so inclined. Can carry a tune, hopefully. Or if not, bring cookies. No, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but we would, we would love to uh, uh, have guests and uh, potential members to come by uh, for our normal practice time, most Monday nights at 7 p.m. Our next and final selection, you can clap if you need to, uh, our final selection for this uh, morning's festivities are uh, the American Armed Forces Medley. And uh, like was done with the reading of the poem, uh, you'll have a little longer to stand this time, but if, when your portion, when your branch of the military service, uh, when that tune pops up in our tune, please stand up. Also, if you're a family member of someone who served, you're certainly welcome to stand. Thank you very much. Thank you to the East Texas Men in Harmony. That was fantastic. 
Please stand for the playing of taps and remain standing for the benediction. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you again for this beautiful day. We thank you for this opportunity to come to gather together as Americans, one nation under God, to honor our veterans and their families who have served this great nation. Lord, we ask to continue to be with them, keep them safe, those who are actively serving, those who have served. Lord, we set some special protection over them and your blessings on them. And we ask these favors in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen.